Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I'm so glad you're stopping by. This is an educational channel for all things around wine, specifically directed to help you pass certain wine certificates. This is aimed for this presentation at the diploma of the WSET level four. So this is on finishing and packaging, post-fermentation clarification, and we're looking at sedimentation and centrifugation. All of the actions that are being used in this um, little sequence. Now, if you have any questions for me, please get in touch. You can get in touch because this is a free video on YouTube by the comments section below this video on YouTube. Please make sure you click subscribe to get two updates per week on all things wine or by social media that you'll see at the bottom of the slide or direct at winewithjimmy.com and that brings me to the next slide here you'll see actually an overview of this mini series and this is a mini series on post fermentation clarification part one which we just talked about will be available here as free content, but part two and parts three are only available on the Wine with Jimmy e-learning portal. Please click on winewithjimmy.com to find out more. But this one is free content, looking at the world of sedimentation and centrifugation. So within uh, certain classifications and certain um, certifications like the diploma for WSET, the um, term clarification is used for all of the processes which are chemical and physical, which are employed to make wine crystal clear. So these are forms of processes which are designed to clear wine. Uh, the processes used to um, clarify grape must, such as sedimentation and centrifugation, are also widely used to clarify wine. Uh, so they are used for grape must, so that's before fermentation and also post fermentation too. In addition, though, to these that we're about to look at, wine may also be fined and filtered. OK, so let's have a little look here about the world of sedimentation. Now, sedimentation, um, you will probably, if you have a geologist edge to you, you will know the word sedimentation and certainly sedimentary so soils. It's something which has been layered over time, things like marls and limestones. So there's a link about layering in here. Uh, and that's similar in essence that something's being deposited with sedimentation in wine. Now, if wine is stored in cool cellar conditions, it will begin this process of clarification, sedimentation, naturally, um, with the uh, suspended matter precipitating over time. So if the wine is allowed to stand and the particles will start to separate, the heavier deposits will start to head to the bottom of the container. They start to uh, fall to the bottom naturally. And I'm actually showing you that here in the left hand side, you have a barrel which has clearly got different layers of sedimentation going on in it. And there's a diagram on the right hand side to tell you through time. So each of these vats is through time. There will be sediments forming and then you've got um, more of a limpid, more of a, a fresher wine being produced at the end of that, okay? Um, so how do we then deal with that? That's where racking comes into play, which is moving your wine from one vessel to another, typically barrel to barrel, uh, leaving the sediment behind. That is covered more in the role of lees in the wine maturation section, which you should have viewed already. The number of rackings required depends on the size of the containers and the available manpower because it can be time consuming. The larger the storage vessel, the greater the number of rackings required to avoid a thicker 
layer of sediment. Um, and of course, typically in wine, we call this gross lees, which can be beneficial into some respects, but normally it can actually create some off flavors if, if left in contact too long with the wine. So reasons for sedimentation, and you will see here that I have a picture of the famous Nicola Jolly, who is, of course, an avid Loire Valley winemaker from the Savignere area, of course, famously owning the monopole of Cully de Sarante. Uh, Nicola Jolly, very much an ambassador for natural or what we'd say biodynamic winemaking and grape growing. Um, and why am I mentioning this? Well, some, some premium wines are clarified in the sedimentation method. Um, and that is because those winemakers, such as Nicola Joly, believe that clarification by sedimentation will avoid the potential loss of texture and flavor, which may be associated with fining and filtration. So they believe it is a more natural way to separate the solids from the liquid, uh, and it maybe it's his nature's way by allowing it over a longer period of time. But that causes problems. Of course, uh, sedimentation is over a longer period of time. It's going to increase the cost in terms of the vessels and the labor. Um, and uh, therefore, of course, there are cheaper or quicker alternatives which are adopted. I put the picture of Nicola Jolly up here because he actually is quite famously quoted for saying that fining and filtering a wine is like making love with a condom. And that speaks volumes if you believe that analogy or not. Uh, but it's an interesting one to uh, uh, hear, of course, as well. So reasons for sedimentation, it's the more natural approach to it. The costs, like I've just in uh, sort of tipped my hat towards, sedimentation will take time. It uh, has uh, issues around the fact that the wine will need to be stored, storage costs. Wine will not be sold immediately. Um, so therefore, there are implications about turnover and quickness of turnover. Uh, so this means that sedimentation is only normally used for more premium or super premium style wines. Now, when we talk about inexpensive, mid-priced, high-priced, premium price, super premium price, this is WSET speak for really categorizing the expensiveness of wines. So when we talk about premium and super premium, we're of course looking at a very, very high single bottle cost. Okay, so sedimentation will often add to that cost. It is, it is a more lengthy, longer process. Um, if a wine is barrel aged, then sedimentation will happen as a part of the barrel aging maturation process. So it is a part of the puzzle of maturation. So it will happen naturally in that essence. And then finally, centrifugation. So using a centrifuge. So let's talk about this. So in many cases, the winemaker will accelerate the process of clarification. Okay, so uh, that's in comparison to, of course, sedimentation. In high volume production, so you're probably looking at normally inexpensive mid-priced, but some more premium wines or high priced wines can also be high volume, but typically lower priced. Um, the speed of processing the wine is actually very important and the wine will be finished, clarified in a much quicker way than sedimentation, which typically can take months uh, and months. So this is a, a quicker way of dealing with it. So first of all, um, centrifugation. Now, fining and filtration are covered in future parts. This is just going to briefly touch on centrifugation. So what happens? Well, this centrifugation process is a very rapid process that spins the wine at high rotational speeds. Think a little bit like those um, fairground rides where everybody is around the edge and it spins very quickly. Similar sort of thing going on here. Every, all the sediment goes towards the edge, the sediment being people in, uh, in that case. Um, there are 
I'm not sure if, if health and safety has prevailed, but when I grew up, certainly there are those rooms you go in that spin around quickly and you kind of crawl around the edge because that's all you can really do. Um, so yes, it, it's, it rotates it quite quickly. Now this could be on a vertical um, centrifuge, as you see here on the left, but you can also get cylindrical version ones as well. Um, this can replace depth filters uh, and it can allow, of course, early bottling, which is a major aim of this process. It's really effective um, and it's effective with wines with a lot of matter in suspension. It's only going to be practiced, though, in wineries that have large volumes because the cost of these machines are actually quite pricey. There's a lot of money included in them. Now, with me, my winery here, I know a little bit about winery equipment, and it's not cheap. And there are things sometimes you have to do without in certainly small scale like mine. And here's one of them. It, these are quite pricey. Now, there are some companies that will hire them out as well, and some will travel around and do it for you. But still, there's a cost implication which is implied within that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of this part. Please remember that we have um, part two and three available on this mini series. And that's only available at winewithjimmy.com on the e-learning portal. Um, the uh, the e-learning portal has um, the other 65, 70% of the videos which are exclusive only to that portal. So we have normally about a third available as free content and the rest only available for members. So thank you so much. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, you can get in touch by all the modes that I mentioned earlier, direct at winewithjimmy.com, social media you see at the bottom of every slide, or the comments section of this video. And if you find yourself in the wonderful rain drenched shores of old Blighty and London town, then come and see us. Come and see us please for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you.